Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Lone Star Gamer Dad here in the festive month of December. We're back with more trails in the sky, and we're gonna go find Jill and meet up with the boys in the cafeteria. I believe she said she was at the dean's office, which should be over here. Schoolhouse. And yep, there she is. Hey, that's a great idea. That's our Dean, always level-headed. Ha ha ha, you flatter me. Then I assume I can trust this list to you. Yes, sir, I'll take care of it. Excuse us. Oh, we're sorry, are we interrupting? No, no, we were just finishing up. Actually... Dean, don't say anything. You'll spoil the fun tomorrow. Uh, what? You're acting all suspicious. So, what are you plotting this time, Jill? <laughs> You'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out. Anyway, what's up? Do you need me for something? Yes, actually. Chloe explained that the evening feast has been planned for the next day in anticipation of the play's success. Oh, that sounds fine. I'm just hoping and praying that the festival is a big success. Let's give it all we've got. Haha, -ha, barring any major complications, I think tomorrow will go just fine. Yes, sir. Come on, Jill, let's go to the cafeteria. Okay. But I don't remember where the cafeteria is. Let's say I, don't, I don't remember. The faculty lounge. Humanities classroom. Yeah, like, uh, is it over here? At the clubhouse? Maybe? Oh, yes, here we are. Hey, we're here! Ew, thanks, everyone! Thank you, Jill. Hey, we've been waiting for you. Now, are you ready to order some food? Yeah, order food. Oh man, my stomach cries out for nourishment. Finishing up the play and having to run hither and yon like a madman really works up an appetite. <laughs> but that all ends after today, right? You're right, I've got to get motivated. That's a new job to deal with and all. Wait, what? What new job? Yeah, I'll tell you about it later. Let's go out there and stir things up. We're going to make this festival a huge success. I'll be counting on you still. You too, Joshua. Oh, I'm all over it. And we'll do our absolute best. That evening, went. That evening, everyone spent a rather busy hour in the cafeteria. At the end, they all raised a toast with soft drinks to the success of the play. Afterward, they returned to the dorm and went to bed early in order to be prepared for the busy day ahead. On and on the day of the festival. The stage is set perfectly. The lights are just right. Okay, looks like we're ready to unleash our masterpiece. We'll be opening soon. We've got a bit before everything starts, though. Go have some fun in the meantime. Now you're talking. I'm going to stuff my face with something from every food stand out there. Looking around is fine. But if you eat too much, you'll be too full to move in the play. Yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't overdo it. Hey, aren't you guys going to come with us? Yeah, we've still got student council business to deal with. You'll be fine. Go have some fun. What? What student council business? Didn't you say the same thing yesterday? Is there something I can do to help? We're fine, I promise. All I need... All you need to do is show Estelle and Joshua around. Aren't the pipsqueaks going to be showing up soon? Oh, right. Sorry. We'll have time enough to go out and enjoy the festival. Oh yeah, and Joshua? If you see any hot girls out there, I expect you to be lying right back here and tell me. Got it? Wouldn't want any of them missing out on the pleasure of my company. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Oh, gorgeous, sensual, charming. Did I miss anything? My friend, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Men. Seriously, talk about one-track minds. Uh -huh. 
Time you've all been waiting for has finally arrived. The 52nd Genus Royal Academy Campus Festival has begun. Okay. And here comes everybody visiting the festival. Holy tons of people! Oh, this is the famed Genus Royal Academy after all. So it's definitely not your average school festival. Uh, well, we were expecting a lot more visitors this year than usual. Alright, it's finally here! Come on, Hans, let's go! Alright. We'll be in the student council office. Come see us if you need us. Sure thing. Best of luck, you two. Shall we go and look around? Works for me! Alright, now we can go talk to people. We come here every year. Uh, mostly, I'm interested in what the vendors may have. But... Oh, hello, Gilbert. Hello, Chloe. Have all your preparations been completed? Yeah, we practiced hard, learned our lines, and spent the afternoon waxing the hairs off Joshua's face and arms. All that's left is the doing now. I see. I look forward to seeing the uh, results of your efforts. In some time since I was last here, but I still love my old alma mater. I have many fond memories of this place. Wow, so this is the Royal Academy. It's huge. wonder where my grandson's classroom is. All right, here's a vendor. Let's talk first. Um, er, would you like some candy? It's, it's super delicious and better than popcorn. I was told to say that. All right, let's see what you got, huh? Rainbow jelly beans. We have not learned that recipe, so let's buy that. Okay, yes. Let's buy this so we can learn to make it, right? Well, well, it's a little candy store. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I should take a little breather before I walk around anymore. Is there any... Oh, there's another one down here, huh? Talk to him. Welcome, welcome, welcome! Hello, ladies! How would you like some light, fluffy popcorn? It's a healthier option than, say, candy. Let's see here. Poppin' popcorn. Holy popcorn. Okay, well, we'll, we'll buy some holy popcorn, too. Since we don't have that recipe. There's quite a few different shops. Ooh, is this ice cream shop? Oh, hi. Do you want to try one? Yeah, it's very, it's pretty good. All right, well. Coffee, ice cream. Man, there's three different kinds. All right, uh, I guess we'll start with apple. Yes. I just want to try it for the, to learn the recipes. All right. And, oh, look, it's an aisle. Uh, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua, what brings you two here? Hi, Niall. Are you here for business or pleasure? Lots of people in the entertainment industry were invited. Did you ever find a link between all those bits of information you found? I wonder. Actually, before I get into that, I'm hungry. I think I'll go fetch me some grub. I'm great at science and biology, but I'm really a novice in the kitchen. Oh well, I'll work on getting the basics at least. Well, let's see what you got. Oh, there's two two new uh, recipes. So I got a bunch of recipes here. All right. Okay, let's go. Look. Oh, the gate is firmly shut, so we can't go in the dorm, huh? All right, uh, hmm, wonder why that is. Boys' dorm is the same way, right? Yep, gate is firmly shut. Uh, the Academy Clubhouse? Well, at least we can go in the clubhouse. I came here with Clem and the other kids. I've always heard stories about how I should visit the Royal Academy if I ever traveled. Wow, the school's really shaping up lately. I've only ever been on to Sunday school. Well, you know, you, you can get pretty far with Sunday school, apparently, in this world. Huh? 
Professor Alba, is that you? The guy from the tower. Will, Estelle, and Joshua. This is a pleasant surprise. I trust you're doing well. Were you invited here for the festival? Sadly, no. I'm here on other business. I've come to investigate a new discovery within the Sephiro Tower. I was hoping that the Academy could provide me with some useful materials. Wow, you're really dedicated. <laughs> well, I have to be. Research hasn't made me wealthy, so I'm fueled by pure enthusiasm. On a related note, the Academy's CERT curriculum is divided into a few courses, isn't it? Will there be any exhibitions? Yes, although the three courses available to study here, only the social studies class will have an exhibition. The students are displaying the results of an independent research project. I see, I recall my own days as a student. So where is this research publication made? Oh, okay, this must be your first time at the Academy, right? Well, let's see, how to explain. Indeed, this campus is fairly littered with buildings. <clears throat> if you'd like, we can just take you there. That would be helpful. But I'd hate to spoil your fun here. Oh, it's fine. We're not doing anything major right now. I see. Well, in that case, I would greatly appreciate you showing me to the exhibition hall whenever you have time. I'll be waiting for you right here in the cafeteria. Hmm, okay. We talk to you. This place is open today as a rest area. We got the same food, though. All right, uh... Let's see, what do you have? Vegetable sandwich. We already know that one, so... Hmm. That student council office. Students and faculty only, please. Gross locker room. Oh, I'm sure I wasn't supposed to... Why am I allowed to go in here? In here? I don't want to have anything to do with this campus festival. I'd rather just spend the time relaxing. Why should I have to get roped into this crap? All right, dude. You say so. Grumble, grumble. But what do you want? Please don't interrupt me. I'm trying to study. Well, let's see if we can go in here. Okay, that should do it. There's our projected budget. We should be okay since it's not that much. Hmm. Documents are all set to go. Now we just need to get the Dean to approve them. So I wonder if... My, the students here are fortunate. I certainly wish my own meals only cost this much. Well, let's continue looking around, because maybe that, that will set off a trigger. That will trigger the cutscene or something. We don't want to go out there, that's for sure. Hmm. Auditorium. Let's go see here. Ah! I've not seen you since last year's Royal Council, Mayor Dalmor. Ah, it's much changed since then. As you can see, I'm feeling quite well. You look to be in good health also. I expect that today will be quite enjoyable. Sunday school is nice and all, but this, this is real learning. When we were students, this building wasn't even around yet. The building to the north used to be the main school building. Humanities classroom. Refreshment booth. Fontana Tea House. Okay, well. Fine, right, give us some tea. Guest at the table, a real maid? Oh! That mean the mayor, uh, Mayor Maybell, is here. Why, yes. Ah, Leela. It's good to see you both again. Oh, well, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua, Mayor Maybell too. What are you two doing here? I'll tell you the truth. I actually graduated from here. I always make a point of going to the campus festival each year. Okay, that's cool. But enough about me, how have you two been doing? Are you here on guild business? <laughs> well, actually... Dale told Mayor Maybell what had been going on. Oh, so you're helping out the play? I've always found them to be slightly tiresome. 
But if you're going to be on stage, I certainly don't want to miss it. Look, I'd really rather not have anyone I know in the audience for this. <laughs> Poor Joshua. Under normal circumstances, I'd never be able to get in here. It's exciting. Where's my little sister's classroom? Gotta fulfill my obligations as her guardian. Uh, that's gonna take me outside. Dean's office, that should take me outside too, right? Faculty lounge. Just a teacher, it looks like. Let's go upstairs here. Uh, social studies classroom. Okay. Does this have anything? No, I was hoping it did. Natural science demonstration. Quartz circuits and orbital arts. Well, well, this is the natural sciences exhibition, yeah? Well, let's see here. I took a day off work to see how my son has matured. Alita seems to be quite well pleased as... Alita seems quite pleased as well. I need to be a better mother from here on out. Gotta turn the doting up to nine. Have you seen the size of the crowd? I wonder if they're all on vacation. Well, what are my mom and kid sister doing here? Told them not to come, said I'd be busy. I know all about it. Jerome did a bang up job. Raina and I don't share any classes or clubs, but we still have room together at the dorm. I'm sure at this rate, it's going to be difficult to breathe. I guess I should take advantage of the freedom to enjoy it while I can. Alright. Hmm. Pretty interesting that... That seems to be it, huh? What just say? The event will be held on the grounds and in the main building. Play is scheduled to be held at the auditorium this afternoon. The student council has set up the cafeteria as a rest area, so please feel free to relax there. I think we should go get the professor and take him to a social studies exhibition. But I don't think there's much else to do now. I mean, I bought all the treats and everything. All right. Let's take him to the social studies room. But he can observe. Well, well, you've certainly pulled out all the stops, haven't you? So many areas of interest, from history to economics. Thank you so much. This looks like smashing fun. It was my pleasure to help, sir. Social studies is my major, so I hope you enjoy looking around. I've never been any good at this whole academics thing. Huh. One of these days, you're really going to have to get over that. Being a bracer requires knowledge in many different areas of study. Gulp. Well, I'm itching to start looking around, so if, you, if you'll excuse me. Thank you again for showing me the way here. I am so tongue-tied today. Hi, my class is fairly low-key. To be honest, I think the research period I quote is pretty plain. But it's okay, I'm just glad we have readers. No haunted houses this year? Too cliched, I guess. Ah, today we're on standby. We're like the information desk. We can explain the social studies periodical in plainer terms if anyone asks. Hmm. Well. Just me here, there are more people than usual. See, I already talked to her. I see, taking him up there set this off. I was wondering what else we had to do. Miss Clem! I don't know. Miss Chloe! Oh, you're all here! Hey, you kiddos, glad you could make it! Are you having fun? Yeah, it's awesome! I ate so much candy, I puked. I told you not to be such a pig. Ah, is Matron Teresa with you? Yeah, she's talking to those people over there. Here she is! Good afternoon, all. Matron Teresa! Good afternoon, Matron. 
Thank you very much for inviting us here today. The children and I have enjoyed it greatly. Hey, Miss Chloe. When's your play thingy supposed to start? We've all been looking forward to it. I see. Well, you'll have to wait just a little bit longer. Did you know that both Estelle and Joshua are going to be in the play with me? Really? That's going to be so cool. What part are you going to be playing, Mr. Joshua? Uh, well, how to put this? Huh. You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Well, by the way, are you guys still staying in Minoria? Yes, through the continued goodwill of the innkeepers. That said, however... Huh? Well... Hey, you guys, did you want to see costumes that'll be used in the play? There are pretty dresses and suits of armor. Pretty dresses? Suits of armor? Oh, I guess I have your attention. I'll give you an exclusive sneak peek at them before the play even starts. Yay! I want to go too! Be backstage. Come when you're ready. Okay, now follow me. We gotta talk with the matron and find out what's up with her, huh? Joshua is such a thoughtful boy. I didn't want to speak of this in front of the children. You mean... Yes, I've chosen to accept the mayor's offer. We will impose upon the Minorians no longer. I will tell the children today, after the festival. I, I see. That's sad, but I suppose you have no choice. Ah, oh, please, don't look at me so. Grandsoul is easily reachable by airship. Moreover, I can look for work while I am there. If I save enough Mira, I'll be able to rebuild the orphanage someday. Matron. Uh, now then, let us find the children, shall we? I would imagine that they're a bit much for Joshua to handle on his own. Oh, this is so cool! I wonder if I could wear it. Not with how short you are. I wish I could try in a white dress. Well, well, you look like you're having fun. Huh? Where'd Joshua go? Mr. Joshua? He left after he brought us up here. He said, wait here until the girls arrive. Hmm. Something wrong? Yeah, I snows. Mr. Joshua went looking for the guy with silver hair. Huh? Silver hair? Yeah, he helped us get out of the fire before. His hair's all shiny and pretty. What? Oh, he's been seen on campus? Uh-huh, just for a second, though. Mr. Joshua was sure surprised. All of you dummy. Why didn't you come and tell any of us? Because I was eating a crepe. Still... I know. I'll be right back, Matron. Yes, that's fine. Chloe, would you please go with her? Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. By your leave, Matron. Hey, you're going too? Yes, I'm sorry. We'll see you at the play. Yeah, it's gonna knock your socks off. Anyway, let's go find Joshua. I don't know who that guy with the silver hair is, but even without meeting him, he totally creeps me out. Just a moment, please. Sig! Hm. Scree? I need to ask you something. Did you see where Joshua went? Scree! Alright, I don't think I'll ever get tired of that. Wait, is he headed... To the old school building down the back road, yes. Shall we? Alright. Old school building up the back exit. Okay. Ooh. Back road, yep. Ooh. Suspicious. The old school house. I wonder if there's anything. Probably not, but I'm going to just wander around real quick. Nope. Okay. 
Guess we have to go in the front door. Let's hoping to find some treasure or something. But... Hmm. I don't know if I want to go upstairs though, man. Wow, what the heck? Whoa. What? Okay, this is bizarre. A dragon? Where are you guys? More of the same over here? I can just said, forget this place, we're out. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll go up here and wander around, right? There's only two ways to go. Ooh, a chest. Reviving bomb. Take that. That's what I was wanting to know, if there was going to be chests hidden in here or not. Seems like there's only these two pathways. Ah, here we go. Strange. I could have sworn. But it couldn't be. Joshua! Hey, you two. We need to stop making us worry about you. I almost had a heart attack when I heard you went chasing after some guy with silver hair. Uh, how did you know? Holly told us. I guess she saw you. Ah, she's a pretty sharp-eyed kid. I did follow a man matching that description out this way. But I guess I lost him. Oh my. He must have been pretty talented if he managed to give you the slip. Any idea who he was? I'm afraid not. I don't think it was our arsonist, though. I tailed him as long as I could. I see. By the way, why'd you run off by yourself? My thoughts exactly. You could have at least left us a message. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. Who, who said I was worried? I was just pointing out the importance of teamwork. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. Not five minutes ago, you were in a total panic. I, I was not. And hey, you were pretty concerned yourself. I, um... <laughs> Thank you, both of you. Oh, there's the bell. Your attention, please. All play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Once again, all play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's almost time, isn't it? Yes, we should get the costume. The play will start soon. All right, then, let's do this. Oh, what about that guy with the silver hair? Hmm... I suppose that all we can do is let Karna know and warn her to keep an eye out. The three then spoke to Karna about the silver-haired man and left for the auditorium immediately afterward. Thirty minutes later... Everyone is seated and they're ready to go. Wow, look at all the people! Okay, now I'm getting kind of nervous. You'll be fine, Estelle. This is what all the rehearsals were for. Besides, once we start up, you'll forget they're even here. You're the type who can only focus on one thing at a time anyway. Just one thing at a time, huh? Well, I guess I'll just focus on the boy in the dress then. That'll be easy. Uh... Okay, okay. You two can have your little spat another time. Ahem. Uh -huh. This year's campus festival is already a big success. Though we have many esteemed individuals here, such as the Duke and the Mayor, we can't afford to be intimidated. So just remember, our number one rule and you'll be fine. If you're going to puke, do it off stage. We've done a good job of keeping the festival lively so far. Now let's close it out with a real bang. Without further ado, the Student Council proudly presents Madrigal of the White Magnolia. Enjoy the show.
In the year 1100 of the Septian calendar, 100 years ago, the Bureau was still a land of nobles and aristocrats. The commoners too held some power, and they were prodigious traders that grew more influential with each passing year. During this period, there was much friction between the classes, and the nobles and commoners clashed often. As time went on, these clashes intensified. The intercession of the royal family and the church failed to end their squabbling. The stage was set for a final conflict. A year had passed since illness stole the king from his people. Our tale begins on an early spring evening on the rooftop of the garden of Granzo Castle. The street lights shine on everyone, each bright with their own happiness. And in spite of that... Ah, here you are, princess. Please, don't you think you should be going to bed soon, your royal highness? Staying up so late can surely do you no good. It's alright. If I should fall ill... If that happened, then perhaps I could avoid becoming the last ember in this dying flame we call the barrel. Please, do not speak of such things. Your Highness, you are the most exalted individual in Libero. If you were to take a husband, you could take control of the kingdom. I will not marry. Despite my father's wishes, I shall not consent to it. But why, Your Highness? You have two fine men as suitors, after all. One is Sir Julius of the Chivalric Order of the Imperial Guards, and the oldest son of a Drew Duke. And Sir Oscar, commoner though he may be, he has been recognized often in his battles against the Empire. Both are such fine men. No one knows better than I the quality of their characters. Oh, Oscar, Julius, how am I to choose between you? Oh my, isn't that Joshua playing the role of the princess? I suppose that Jill was put a great deal of thought into this reverse casting business. Indeed, ma'am. He plays the role well. The two maids leave much to be desired. <laughs> Do you remember, Oscar? How we spent our boyhood days in this alley running about and pretending our sticks were swords? I could never forget, Julius. In those days, it was all so simple, with you and with Cecilia alike. I treasure that time greatly. Huh, I recall how stunned I was. I would always conspire to play with her in secret, only to discover another had been doing the same. She was as lovely as the sight of falling petals in spring. Indeed, fair Cecilia was like unto our very own sun. But her light would dim with each day that passed. The nobles and the commoners. The fury of that conflict could never have been avoided. The princess' grief is easily understandable. Cruel fate mocks us so. For it is our very existence that has brought her such sorrow. Oh wow, they're so cool. I hate to say it, but the guy kind of looks cuter than the girls. <laughs> Hush now and watch the show. Know this, Julius. Commoner's impudence can be tolerated no longer. If they should forget their place and no longer view us as their superiors, the Bureau's power structure would surely fall into ruin. If I may, Father, it has been roughly ten years since the Eastern Republic was founded. Perhaps the eventual seizing of power by the common people is inevitable in any state. Speak not of such repulsive events. What is freedom? What is equality? What is anything if commoners and nobles alike should cast all tradition aside? Better we should fall to our knees before the Empire's military and could cede to their will. Father! <laughs> now that's a damn fine duke up there. You let the commoners get all high and mighty and your whole society collapses. But Grace, perhaps it would be best to keep our voices down. Oscar, I'm expecting great things from you. If you can get the royal family on our side, we will have a great advantage over the nobles. And that advantage would allow us to seize power. 
But Chairman, I cannot consent to this. I could never use Cecilia as for political gain. <laughs> Always putting others before yourself, I see. Even though you now have the chance to become king, albeit only on paper. If you would refuse, it will lead to only a bloody uprising and subsequent revolution. The royal family, and surely the nobles as well, would disappear into the shadows of history. Chairman! Impressive. They've really done their research. I had severe doubts about this ever since I first turned the reverse role gimmick. Oh, the students have all put a great deal of work into this, it seems. The young bracers have had no small hand in this either. I do not wish bloodshed on anyone, revolution or not. I cannot simply allow Julius and Cecilia to die. As for myself, I know not what I should do. Oh, it's no good. I'm going to be sick. Are you all right? You must have had quite a bit more than you can handle. Maybe spring, but you'll surely catch your death if you sleep out here. Oh, uh, thank you, good sir knight. It has nothing to do with being a knight, but rather simple concern. I would have to be quite the young fool not to see what I must do. You've got that right. What? Oh, oh my arm! <laughs> Just a touch of anesthetic on the blade. Now, if you'll be so kind as to sit still. Curse you, assassin! Who sent you? Just a noble who wants you out of the picture. He wanted it. He wanted it badly enough to pay me up front and pretty well at that. All you need to do is die. Ah, oh, I get it. Not bad. Not bad at all. So up next we should have... Whoops, almost got so wrapped up that I forgot about my work. Long has it been since you've entered my sight, fair princess. Yes, Julius, it truly has. I cannot help but notice that Oscar is not with you today. Back when my father yet breathed, the both of you were oft spoken of by the maids of the court. As you well know, your highness, the kingdom is in the midst of a crisis most dire. And as such, he and I may never be able to cl as close as we once were. I confess, I come to you today to ask a favor. What favor would that be? That you would allow he and I, head of the chivalric order of the High Guard and a young general, to engage in a duel of honor, and that the victor shall be granted the great honor of becoming your husband. Uh... Ah, quite dramatic indeed. Caught up in the conflict between noble and commoner, these two close friends have finally decided on a duel. Princess now realizes their determination and keeps silent. And on the day of the duel, two knights step into the grand arena of the royal city. Many have come to witness it, commoner, noble, and all social castes in between. But conspicuously absent from the proceedings is the one over whom they fight, Princess Cecilia herself. My friend, I fear that this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak, that we may both be unburdened. Nothing else for our beloved princess. We would cleave a path through fate with our own hands. But at this moment my words and her smile seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, Oscar? Perhaps, but what is this passion that pierces me to the quick? Perhaps, but what is this passion that pierces me to the quick? As I see you with blade drawn, I feel as though I've been waiting for this moment. Before the storm, by the name of revolution, should claim us both. We shall let fate decide our outcome. Yes, and may the goddess above see our spirits as they truly are. Come then, let it be done! On guard! Nice sword fighting action, girls.
<laughs> Impressive, Julius. I should say the same of you. But still, you seem to hesitate. What troubles you, Oscar? Is this an extent of your skill? Perhaps the tales of your acts of valor against the Empire were grossly overstated. <laughs> ah! Oh, nice jumping. Well done, Julius. Magnificent swordsmanship. Ah. Oh. Oscar, your arm. I've had worse. Tis but a scratch. Neither of our blades connected with flesh, not even a glancing blow. Your wound was struck prior. This is a tactic most low, Duke Radmont. Was this your intention from the start? Ha ha ha. I'll thank you to cease slandering my good name. Are you implying that I instigated this? Father, is it true? Did you? It's all right, Julius. From my own inexperience has brought this about. Besides, I receive far worse on the field of battle. I will put everything I have behind my next strike. Strike. I intend. I intend to kill you, Oscar. Very well. I will wager it all on my next strike as well. For the fair princess and the future of the very kingdom. He who lives when all is said and done will inherit the responsibility for all. And he who dies will watch over it all from the realm of the spirits. Such is also the pride of a knight. I suppose it is. And hi -ya! No! Oh! Cecilia, what? Oh no, Cecilia, she jumped in the middle. Princess! Cecilia, why? Were you not in attendance? Oh, Oscar, Julius. I did not wish to observe a duel between the two of you. I felt I had to find a way to put a stop to this fight. Praise Idios that I arrived in time. Cecilia. Princess. Hear me all in attendance. Dismiss me and set aside your differences, please. Are we not all of Liberal? And do we not love this land? There's still so little that separates us from one another. If you'd but take your foe's hand, surely we could find a peaceful resolution. Your, your Royal Highness! You need say no more. My vision fades. But what of you two? Will you do as I ask? Your will be done, my princess. At your side. Strange, everything is floating. When I was young, I would sneak out of the castle down to the alley. Oscar, Julius, you both always had smiles for me. I love your smiles. So please, don't ever stop. And dramatic death. Princess? No, this cannot be, princess. I'll do anything, please, no. Cecilia, you our poor princess. I just don't understand why she'd do such a thing. Our princess gave her life that we might stop this unending dispute. Compared to that sacrifice, what a trifle is the pride of a nobleman. Had we not been fighting, it would never have come to this. Only now, when it's too late, do, we, do I see our folly. Is this the fate of all men with their spirits still shackled to their flesh? Ideos, great goddess of the skies, we now know of your great resentment. There is much that you do not yet understand, it seems. I granted you flesh to be your vessel, but your spirits still know more of freedom and nobility. Such contempt for it lies only within you, yourselves. So beautiful. A more beautiful voice I have never heard. It's amazing. Idios herself has graced us with her presence. The goddess? Incredible. Hear me, young knight. I have observed your contest. 
You are both courageous and strong, yet something vital within you is broken. It is as you say. Our own immaturity is what invited this fate upon us. Chairman? Has your f hate for the nobles and the monarchy blinded you to the fact that we are all but men? I am ashamed. Duke? You know your sins better than anyone else could. And you, all the rest of you, will simply watch these events unfold. There's something fundamental within you that is lost as well. Strike your hand upon your breast and think well upon this. Haha, -ha, and now it seems that you have each remembered your hearts. As such, perhaps hope yet remains for Liberal. So long as you never forget the lessons learned this day. Oh, she has vanished. Oh, where am I? The princess? Cecilia? Oh my, Julius, Oscar. Have you both been called up to heaven as well? Oh, it's, it's a genuine miracle. Princess! Oh, praise Adios! What? Why are the two of you here? And the Duke, and the Chairman. So then I'm not dead? Almighty Idios! Idios has given Libero back its beloved! Praise her for her benevolence! Oscar? Julius? Um, what happened? Nothing that you need concern yourself over, Cecilia. The conflict is at an end. I believe that everything will be alright. You, you're being naive, Oscar. We still have a duel to finish, do we not? Julius? No. You still intend to fight? On the contrary, the match is concluded. Besides, this fool managed to get hit on his sword arm. But it would not do for a duel such as this to not have a clear victor. Thus, it stands to reason that the man who fought with a significant handicap yet emerged undefeated, should be regarded as the victor. Wait, Julius! Don't, don't misunderstand me, Oscar. I have not given up on the princess. Once you are healed, our duel will continue, but with blades of wood. Just as when we were boys. I see. Very well, then. I accept your challenge. Have neither of you any regard for my own wishes? Y you are mistaken. You, my lady, shall judge today's match, and I think it's only fair for the victor to be granted a kiss. Really, everyone waits with bated breath for it. Very well. <laughs> Eek! Don't they look marvelous together? Almighty Idios, look well upon this. And may this fine day extend unto eternity. Eternal peace to Libero. Eternal glory to Libero. Yay! Not quite the grand finale. There's the silver haired guy. But no matter. Hmm. And so the curtain fell on the madrigal of the White Magnolia. To grand fanfare and acclaim. With its conclusion, an announcement went out that the campus festival had reached its end. The crowd began to disperse and leave the campus, each person wearing a look of contentment. Ah, brilliant, Jess, brilliant! That was one fine play, if the director's allowed to say so. At first, I thought people would make fun of us with the roles switched like that. I'm so glad they took it seriously. How great, the costumes worked out pretty well. I wouldn't want to have to wear mine again, though. Corsets are like some form of torture. <laughs> no kidding. Well, it was all for a good cause. And just wait till you see how many pictures the photography club took. The ones of you ought to be particularly popular. Ah, uh, give it a rest. The ones of Estelle and Chloe won't exactly drive people away either. The guys always go nuts for the junior girls. We're really going to rake in the mirror. I mean, uh, all proceeds will go to a good cause. 
chill. Hmm. Still, what's wrong? Uh. Oh, uh, what? Where? What are you talking about? Nothing important, really. We've been you've been spacing out since the play finished. Are you okay? Well, that fight scene was pretty hard work. It's no surprise that you're tired. You feel sick? We can take you to the nurse's office. I'm fine, really. I deal with fatigue every day as a bracer. Just trying to get my head back in order, so. Oh. Still, you don't mean... No, no, nothing like that at all. Ah, oh, I promise I am perfectly all right. Oh. <laughs> I trust we're not interrupting? <clears throat> Chloe, Oscar was so cool. I want to be that cool when I grow up. <laughs> Thank you. You were really great too, Miss Estelle. Ah, uh, Sir Julius. Hey now, Mary. <laughs> and Josh was so cute. Yeah, I couldn't stop looking. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It was great fun for us all. Play about love and friendship, buffeted by the winds of a tumultuous era. It was so moving. The fight scene was intense, and though one could only expect it to end in tragedy. And had such a heartwarming conclusion. I thought it was splendid. Well, with praise like that, I'd have to say it was worth the effort. Oh yeah, Hans? Oh right, almost forgot. Oh, uh, what's up? Oh, uh, it's nothing bad, don't worry. I'll be right back, so just keep doing what you're doing. Um, okay. Those were Jill and Hans, no? Chloe, your friends are on the student council then? Yes, they were in charge of the production of the play. I see. I must thank them then. The children will have many fond memories of Ruan. It matron. I've made up my mind. I will tell them my decision when we return to Minoria. And then tomorrow we'll take the first steps. Whoa, so soon? Hey, what you talking about? Clem, you shouldn't listen in on grown-ups talk. It's okay, Mary. But I think we should probably return to the inn. We can have dinner and continue our discussion over there. Uh, okay. Now then, Chloe. And you too, Estelle and Joshua. I'm afraid we'll be taking our leave. Thank you for today. It was a lovely play. Uh, hold on a sec. Jill's coming back any moment. She probably wants to say goodbye before you go. Pardon me. Oh, Dean Collins. It's a pleasure to see you again, Matron Teresa. I must apologize for not coming by earlier to thank you for taking the time to visit. You needn't thank me. The festival is magnificent. I'm grateful for the invitation. Yes, the students were magnificent, weren't they? Chloe told me of your current situation. Truly dreadful. I was trying to think of a way that we could help. I... Jill? Yes, sir. Please, take this. Jill handed Matron Teresa a bulky envelope sealed with Royal Academy's crest. What's this? We took up a collection for you. It's one million Mira. Wow. Please use it to help rebuild the orphanage. But oh, that's insane. Well, one million Mira? That's impressive. Yeah, man, where's that kind of stuff when I needed help when we had a roof almost blow off our house? Couldn't even get ten dollars. But how? Well, we have the Duke, as well as the Mayor of Bow, so there are some celebrities here. Thanks to them, we were able to collect far more than we would have otherwise. Dean. No, I couldn't. I can't accept this. I don't see why not. The festival collects donations for charity every year. People donated specifically to help rebuild the orphanage. But I... It's too much. Please accept it, matron. 
But Chloe, I realize that you're overwhelmed, but think about it. With that much mirror, the rebuilding could start and you wouldn't need to go to Gransel. You wouldn't have to give up your herb garden. She speaks the truth. Joseph would want you to accept this for the children. You needn't focus on the amount, just what can be done with it. You're right. I don't know how to show my appreciation. Thank you, thank you all so very much. That's awesome. Yeah, that should settle that. Hey, what's this about going to Gransel? Did something happen? It's okay, there's no need to worry. You've all been through so much. It's really not that big a deal. But why are you crying, Matron? Don't be silly, Clem. Those are happy tears. After the matron and the children left to return to Minoria, Estelle and Joshua joined the other students for cleaning up after the festival. By the time everything was done, the day had given way to evening. But we had everything set up for you to be able to stay. I mean, the festival just ended and everything. Oh, sorry, but we can't. Since we're still apprentices, we can't go too long without checking in at the guild. We'd like to give our report before the day's out if we can, so you'll have to excuse us. Is that so? Oh, well, I guess I'm on my own tonight. Sure gonna be lonely in bed without you. What? Hans, would you please give your tasteless joke some rest? Still, don't listen to him. Oh, <laughs> a joke. Never boring with you guys, I'll give you that much. I hope you'll get the chance to come see us again. Stay for a couple of days and nights. Uh, sure, we will. Thank you. We'll stop in again soon. Ah, uh, well, let's get going. We'll lose the daylight if we don't hurry. So you're headed to Minoria, Chloe? Yes, there's a lot I want to talk to the matron about. It would be all right for me to stay over at the inn with her and the kids tonight. I hate that you won't be here after the festival. Ah, oh, well, what can you do? I hope you have a good time. Oh yeah, about the matron and the kids. Isn't it kind of risky for them to be carrying around that much money? Oh, don't worry about that. One of the other bracers escorted the whole lot of them back to the village. Her name's Karna. Apparently, the dean made a special request. Ah, he never misses a beat. Well, stay healthy, you guys. Here's hoping you guys do great with your bracer studies. Hey, yeah, you can count on it. Best luck to you both as well. Hmm. We only had a few days at the academy, but it was great fun. Well, other than class, anyway. What are you talking about, Estelle? Normally, students spend most of their time attending classes. The school festival might have been fun, but it was just a special event. Yeah, you're right. Man, being a student is tougher than I thought. <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. Just that I can't sense Sieg nearby. Wonder where he went. Maybe he's just looking for dinner. Yeah, that may be it. I'm sorry. I'm just being silly. Please allow me to come with you as far as the coastal road. Sure, it'll be fun. And fun that will have to be had in the next video. We got through a lot with this play and the festival and all that. The play was pretty fun. Lengthy, but fun. <laughs>